And what we realize when we study this topic of fairness as a whole is that not only is it, is it subjective, but it really is a mindset. It's completely a mindset. And for many people, it's a mindset of entitlement. Meaning what? Life's not fair because I didn't get this and I didn't get that. And because this didn't happen for me and that didn't happen for me. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of times it says, it says a lot about our priorities in life and what we think about. Because a lot of times you don't have your faith crisis. You don't start thinking about life not being fair because of the children that are starving in Africa or in Syria or whatever it may be. You start thinking that life's not fair when you didn't get into med school. Or when you didn't marry the person that you wanted to marry. Right? That's when you start questioning God and that's when you start questioning the fairness of life. That's a greater crisis to you than the other stuff that was going on in the world. And you started using the other stuff in the world because now you're depressed and now life wasn't fair to you. And you're complaining and while you're complaining you get to a point sometimes where you accuse God himself, Allah himself of being unfair. Which is the discussion tonight that I'm not going to touch. But it shows you that it's a concept or, or it is a mindset of entitlement. And you know, subhanAllah, when you study it truly from, you know, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said something very powerful. Um, he said that the people that accuse Allah of not having adil, of not being just, and of life not being just to them, it's not that they want, li it's not that they want life to be fair, it's that they want life to be unfair in their favor. I thought that was very powerful, subhanAllah, when I read that. He said, you know, you know and think about that. It's, you, you don't really need text to justify that statement. You know, you want to be rich. You're not really complaining about life being unfair when things are going well for you. Okay, when you have your house, when you have your car, when you have your career, when you have your education, when you have your money, it doesn't matter that life's unfair. You can, verily, you can very easily quote the ayat of the Qur'an about patience and those types of things and say, yeah, you know, Allah is taking care of them and there's a greater purpose for them. Alhamdulillah, we should all say Alhamdulillah and we should all be happy. It's not, there, it's not a problem when it's unfair in your favor. It's a problem when you feel like you're getting the bad end of it. And you know, again, it's so subjective that I'll share with you all a personal experience. I had someone in my office, in my masjid, uh, three years ago. And I try not to give many details because thanks to YouTube, I've gotten in a lot of trouble over the last few years uh, of telling stories without saying names. And then that person watches them on YouTube and I get in trouble. So I'll try not to be uh, too detailed in what I say. But one of the things that, that you know, that that took place subhanAllah over six years of being Imam in New Orleans is that I was exposed or I was exposed to the real problems that we have as a community and also how shallow and superficial we are as people and you know so I had this brother in my office and, and he's crying and I was wondering why he's you know I thought something tragic happened in his life and you know he lost his job or something happened but you know instead what he's talking about he's saying that you know life's been tough recently and he lives in a really nice house mashallah great car very rich very wealthy has several kids and he says life's been tough recently you know and you know things are getting really tough and he said but I don't know you know sometimes I question Allah and I said oh you know a'udhu billah what's going on and he starts telling me he says you know every year I take my kids to Europe for a vacation. And he said, this year I don't have enough money to take my kids to Europe for a summer vacation. What am I supposed to tell my kids when they come to me and tell me, Dad, why aren't we going anywhere this summer? That was his faith crisis. <laughs> to him, that was life being unfair. And I'm sitting there looking at him like, and <laughs> what else happened? But to him, that's life being unfair. And what does that show you? Again, it is a mindset. There's a very powerful hadith. Very, the hadith is in Sahih Muslim. It's narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As anhu. If my memory does not fail me, I think it's from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ Verily, he has succeeded who has submitted himself. Shaykh Sa'ad talked about the Islam part. Submitted himself. It's a prerequisite to everything that comes next in the hadith. 
قد أس قد أفلح من أسلم ورزق كفافا. And he was given enough. Kafaf means to be given just enough. And listen to the last part of the hadith. وَقَنَّعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا أَتَهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala convinced him or satisfied him with what he gave him. So what does that show you? That these two, that these two things that were just mentioned don't always come together. You might be given enough, but you're not convinced with what you have and you're not satisfied with what you have. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who really succeeds in life and the one who's really happy in life is, is the one who has submitted himself, who has, who has attained that peace through Islam, was given enough, and Allah satisfied him with what He gave him. Allah convinced him. Qana'ah is, is literally to be convinced. It's not rida, it's not necessarily satisfaction or contentment. It's literally to look at yourself and say, Alhamdulillah, yeah, you know, this is good, this is great. And when you look at the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, went through many stages in his life. And that's why I say we can justify this through a seerah perspective. And Imam Al-Qurtubi in particular, rahimahullah, he says that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was tested with every phase of life. He was tested with wealth, with ghina. He was rich. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. he was rich. After he married Khadija radiallahu anha, until the time that he received his revelation, he was a rich man. He became a wealthy man. And he passed the test of wealth. That's what he said. He passed the test of Al-Ghina. How did, how did he pass the test of Al-Ghina? Because when he was rich, what did he do? He freed slaves. He took care of orphans. He didn't become arrogant as a result of his wealth. His personality did not change at all. Right? The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not change as a result of being wealthy. And, and in fact, those were the words that Khadija radiallahu anha shared with the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he came down from Hira, right? لا يخزيك الله أبدا Allah will never humiliate you. Why? Because look at all the great things that you do. You know, you do well by orphans and, and your guests and your neighbors and your family. You do well with people. You do what you're supposed to do. And Khadija has been rich longer than the Prophet, peace be upon him. She knows that most rich people are snobs. They don't do that stuff. He passed that test. Then Imam Al-Qurtubi said, Allah stripped him of everything and tested him with poverty, with Al-Faqr. Absolute poverty. The Prophet, peace be upon him, experienced poverty in its worst form. Not only did he experience poverty from a financial perspective, but you know, truly, as, as Sheikh Sa'ad mentioned, everything was taken away from him. Everything was taken away from him. His wife, his uncle, his protection, everything. His support from his tribe, his land, his home. I mean, everything was taken away from him. And he said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed the test of poverty. Ahsana fi faqrihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He passed that test. Why? Because he showed a beautiful patience. He demonstrated truly, sabrun jameel, a beautiful patience. Not only was he patient because he had to be patient, he demonstrated a, a satisfaction with God, a contentment with God. And the only thing he cared about in those moments of poverty was God not being displeased with him, was that poverty not being a manifestation of Allah's displeasure because sometimes you question yourself in poverty. And that's a mistake in mindset. That's a mistake in the way we think sometimes. It's called the prosperity doctrine. Almost every religion in the world has some form of the prosperity doctrine. Okay? Whether it be the Eastern religions and Hinduism, the caste system, or even in evangelical Christianity today, that when God loves you or whatever divine presence loves you, you're well off. And when God doesn't love you, then you're not doing too well. But Islam preaches the exact opposite. Right? When Allah loves you, He tests you. When Allah loves you, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that Allah withholds the water, withholds the world from you the way that one of you would withhold water from one who has a fever. 